Some of it did get on the walls. Glad to hear it. Hey, you should be down there. And not just as another pair of hands. Does Trudy repeat everything I say back to you? Hey, come on, that's not fair. She only tells us because she cares. Like, well, like we all do. I'd be fine if everyone just left me in peace. If people couldn't see how down you were. We all have our bad days. But we haven't just all given up on someone we've loved. Do you wish you'd gone with them? Sometimes. I suppose you wonder where he is and what he's up to? Most of the time. I suppose you wonder if he's missing you as much as you're missing him. All right. Who taught you how to read minds? Come on, Amber. You think I haven't been there and done that? It hurts, doesn't it? So welcome to episode 38 of Conversation on Eagle Mountain, a podcast about the tribe. I'm your host, Lance, and joining me on the podcast panel today is Liz. Hello. Sabine. Hi. Maggie. Hi. We have episode notes done by Matt and myself. So episode 38, the screenplay was done by Carrie Rose. It was directed by Lawrence Wilson. And the episode synopsis we read out by Maggie. Jack believes he's made a discovery that could potentially change the lives of everyone, an adult wandering the streets. But can he get the others to believe him? In the meantime, Bray convinces the tribe to clean and decorate the mall to liven the place up. Everyone's surprised Lex is on board from the start. But is this just another of Lex's tricks to boot Bray from power? Following on from the previous episode's cliffhanger, Jack wants to go out and look for the mysterious adult right away. But with the CCTV playback no longer clear, only Patsy will believe him without any further proof. Um, panel, we know that this is something that Jack has always been, always dreamed of and has been searching for, but um, what do you think about Patsy's kind of desperate excitement to discover that an adult is truly alive? I think it was very suitable for Patsy to respond like that. And, I mean, she just made a birthday wish that the adults would come back. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do find it logical that Patsy is the one to instantly believe it. She has that childlike innocence and hope that maybe things can go back to normal in some way. Mm -hmm. It also takes you back to um, when Jack was showing Chloe the radio and Amber wouldn't allow Chloe to stay and told him that it wasn't good to give her hope like that. And, um, at first, you know, it did seem like, geez, Amber, they weren't doing anything wrong. But now when you see Patsy's reaction to what Jack believes is an adult, um, it actually gives a little validity to what Amber was worried about. Mm. You know, that hope that, you know, the world they live in isn't really, it's all going to go away and it's all going to be made better. I mean, the way Patsy latches on to this, I suddenly I'm like, okay, I, I get it why Amber didn't want Jack putting those ideas in Chloe's head. Because it's even worse when the reality, you know, when Patsy has to be faced with the reality it's going to be even worse than it was. And so I thought that was interesting. I just agree with you guys. I don't really have much to say in that instance. I mean, it's a little scary, though, how, how desperate she is and how immediately, you know, she's like, okay, well, this is what we're going to do, you know? Mm. Did it surprise anyone that Chloe didn't respond that way? No, it didn't surprise me in the least bit. Yeah, because neither. over the last like few episodes, or you know, the, the, over the course of the season, she's been kind of brought down to reality mm -hmm. yeah. by the people around her. You know, um, she kind of sees things for what they are now. Yeah, I thought that showed a great um, contrast between mm -hmm. Chloe and Patsy in this. Yeah, Chloe's so much more well mature, one would say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, did you enjoy that? Like, like Sabine said, it was only kind of set up like one episode ago. Like, do you not mind that, or do you find it was like a good new story arc for her? I thought it worked because it was at least consistent in her character. In the same way that Chloe does not latch on to the idea that there's an adult wandering around, that's consistent with Chloe's character. Patsy has always sort of been more the sheltered child, the one who's definitely more wanting to live in an imaginary world, still seeming to cling to the old world. Mm -hmm. 
And Chloe has already shown time and time again that she is more grounded and more sensible and has a, just a better grasp on the world that she's living in and the people and a better idea of the way the bottom can drop out where Patsy yeah. doesn't live in that reality. And it goes, you know, kind of like with Patsy a few episodes back where, you know, when Amber first left and she tells Chloe, don't worry, someone else will take care of us. And you know, Chloe's like, like uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah. world isn't that simple, Patsy, you know. Um, so even though, yeah, they just had Patsy, you know, showing this concern about growing old and dying and wanting all the grown-ups back. Even though that just showed up last episode, the idea of Patsy latching onto this fantasy with that kind of fervor and wanting this perfect little fix is very consistent with who she's been presented as. Mm -hmm. And did you guys like how proactive she was? Like, whereas Jack just kind of defaulted back to trying to fix the technology, she went out there with Bob to try and find her. I did not like that, to be completely <laughs> honest. Like, uh, I was like, oh, no, Patsy. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, like... Because she is a child and she is naive and and she doesn't really see the world for what it is. And for her to just wander off like she did, you know, without telling anybody where she went, that's smart. <laughs> it, it did make a bit of sense to me that she did that, though, because none of the bigger kids will believe her. So she knows they won't support her. Was it smart? Nope. No, yeah, I mean, it definitely was. I'm not saying it didn't make sense. It just wasn't smart. <laughs> I'm a little torn. Like, I agree with Maggie that it's really dumb. And it's strange that this is the first time Patsy decides to be proactive is to do something really stupid. But I do like the fact that she took action. <laughs> I prefer my characters to move their own plot along. So, and I thought it was, it said something that Patsy, who's been terrified of leaving them all at all times, even if it meant she might be able to find her brother, she didn't want to leave them all. This was this motivated her enough that she didn't even ask anyone to go with her. She didn't say, hey, Chloe, let's do this. She mm. just took off on her own with Bob. And I think this is a lot about how much she wants this to be real. So even though it was stupid, I, I didn't like dislike it, I guess. Mm. She did try talking to Amber for a moment. But yeah, I, I can see her point of view in it with a, okay, they don't care. They don't believe it. I know there's someone out there. There has to be. You know, she's so stuck to the idea and the hope that there will be an editor. And if she can find him, they will take care of her. So she'll be perfectly safe with Bob. And it is a contrast to Jack, who would rather sit there whining about no one believing him than doing anything like finding more proof, you know? Mm -hmm. Like just, okay, if you really believe there was someone out there, Jack, why don't you go up on the roof and just look around and wait, see if they might come back. Just anything to get your proof, you know? Um, but he's still on his crutches. He can still, he's running around all over the place. He yeah. can go through the roof, okay? I was literally just going to say, but he's got a broken leg. And I'm like, but wait a minute. He was rushing around on that one crutch the entire he's going episode. up and so. down the stairs. <laughs> he can definitely go up to the roof and just sit and watch. I mean, that's mm. what I would do if I was Jack. If I was that desperate and truly believed that there was an old person walking around my mall and I couldn't get a good visual on my camera, dude, I'd go outside and look around and wait and see maybe they'll come back who knows i might lay a trap for them <laughs> i'd bait them you know uh, can you imagine jack setting a trap so i just had the vision of <laughs> what he used as bait like, for <laughs> yeah i'm like what would he use i, I was picking a box and a string <laughs> <laughs> some tinned goods under there some <laughs> cream I was thinking like practical things like like a cane or <laughs> glasses or something. <laughs> you want me to go away? So you can curl up under your duvet forever? I've been there, remember Amber? I thought I'd never climb out of the black hole. But somehow I have. It's a bit scary when you're standing at the bottom staring up. Didn't this mean anything to you? It did. He did. But was it real? How can you ask that? Or did I escape into fantasy like Jack and Patsy? Okay, um, yes, let's talk about Sasha for one of the final times. <laughs> uh, so before Patsy leaves them all, she does gush to Amber about the adult, but um, a moping Amber doesn't return her enthusiasm. And we don't see Amber wrapping up the shell necklace that Sasha had given her, and she instead gives it 
to Patsy via Trudy as a belated birthday gift. Um, yeah, panel, what do you think of this scene um, with Amber's inner turmoil and how she gives away her only memento of Sasha? It's so in character for her. It's such a coping mm-hmm. mechanism that I can see Amber using. It's hurt so much that she would rather tell herself than I, it couldn't have really been love because love shouldn't hurt like that. Um, it's a way of dismissing what she had with him, trying to make this pain go away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not a healthy coping mechanism, but it is one of Amber's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And I've been there. I think all of us at some point have been hurt that bad that we'd rather oh, erase yeah. what we went through than learn to deal with it and what we mm-hmm. learned or whatever. So it's just very Amber. <laughs> it is. The giving away of the necklace does feel a bit weird though, because like we kind of we see we see that Amber is quite a kind of memento keeper. She does like her mementos and um, acknowledgments of different people in the past. I, weird. I think you know, like with her and, and the way she's feeling about Sasha right now, having that in her possession, in her face, you know, I think it was just too hard. And I think that was another, you know, coping mechanism. Get rid of anything that reminds me of him. Mm. Yeah, it's like burning the love letters, you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there are people, I mean, you see people, they have breakup parties and their friends come yeah. over and they're mm-hmm. like, we're going to destroy everything he ever gave you so you don't have to think about him ever again or her ever again. I'm yeah. like, I'm an opposite. I never destroy any mementos. No matter how much it hurt, I'll keep everything. Same. I'm the same way. <laughs> so I can't relate to it, but I mean, it's, it's a very common thing to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can fully relate. Dude, they call them trash can parties, where you like you literally yeah. put all the mementos in a trash can, set it on fire. Ooh, he's gone or she's gone. <laughs> if I just think about the amount of pictures that I've cut people out of, yep, wow. I totally get it. <laughs> I just don't take pictures with people. That saves me the trouble. <laughs> That's some serial killer stuff, Sabine. Just letting you know. <laughs> Sometimes the picture gets improved by not having specific people in it. If you want to keep the memory of a specific holiday, but you don't want to remember who you took that holiday with, I have no issues with cutting people off. Yeah, it just surprised me about Amber. Um, I mean, okay, and the other thing, yeah, how do you feel about her giving that gift to Patsy? Ah, uh, I found it weird. Yeah, it was very strange. <laughs> it was it was very strange because it was an afterthought type of situation. It wasn't for, for Patsy's benefit, it was for Amber's benefit, you know? Oh, yeah. It was definitely not for Patsy. It was more like, I want yeah. to get rid of this. I don't want it. Um, oh, yeah. I didn't get Patsy a present. So. Yep. Yep. Here's my ex lover's neck- necklace. Here, wear it. Like, what? <laughs> right. What? Why? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. why, would, why would she want Patsy to wear that? Then it'll be in her face constantly. Exactly. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the only thing I can come up with there is that if she would give it to Patsy, she would just. Try and remember, oh, yeah, Sasha, he was fun with the kids. I guess I can see that, kind of. But still, it's just strange. (laughs) I mean, it does make sense to force a painful memory into a positive reassociation because she doesn't hate Sasha. You know what I mean? She hurts, Mm -hmm. but she doesn't hate him. She doesn't seem to harbor any angry feelings towards him for leaving. She's more upset at herself for falling for him, you know, because she takes full responsibility for what happened. She knew mm-hmm. what she was getting into. She thought she could handle it. She couldn't. So she doesn't hate him. She doesn't blame yeah. him. Um, she always knew he was going to leave. Uh, so the way Amber sees it is she doesn't want to hate him, but she doesn't want to think about him because it hurts. And mm-hmm. I agree with Sabine. Giving the necklace or just even the shell to Patsy reminds you of the good Sasha did bring to them all that has nothing to do with her. You know, mm-hmm. and yes, he made the kids very happy and very joyful. And so, it, yeah, it's, it's like reconstructing your reality. She doesn't want to remember the fact that he left, but she can, if she does this, she can remember the good he did when he was there, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying do the same, but that's all. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely think she's angry with herself, you know, at, at this point for allowing herself to fall down that hole. And that's why she's lashing out at everyone around her. I don't think she blames Sasha. I think she blames herself for everything. Yeah. She let herself feel. um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's definitely nursing it. Which I can understand. Sometimes it feels really good to nurse a pain. (laughs) It's like, you you know, you have a loose tooth and it hurts, but you keep tonguing at it anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just a Mm -hmm. satisfaction to the pain, you know. (laughs) I'm going to hunker down and just bask in this 
it's like looking in the mirror when you're crying and then you try to think of more things that make you sad so you cry harder oh yeah <laughs> it's a cathartic thing <laughs> it is it is so you start crying because you had a bad day and it feels good letting it out and so suddenly you're like you start crying about that party you didn't get invited to in the third grade <laughs> You weren't your grandmother's favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine an adult from the old world. Maybe someone with a bit more sense than us. You might be a professor. Dead clever. Might be able to work on a cure. Might be a lord or a king. A footballer or a pop star even. We could get their autograph. <laughs> it's so nice of you to try and cheer up Celine. But we all know the truth, don't we? Before we get to the paint fight, um, let's talk about Ryan, Celine, and Zandra. Because we have the topic of Jack projecting his um, dreams about seeing an adult on everyone's lips. Um, we have Ryan and Celine chewing each other up by dreaming up who this mysterious adult could be. Um, but then you also have Zandra um, coming in, and there's a bit of jealousy there. I can't tell you how many times I was like, You are married, woman. This episode, it was it was ridiculous. <laughs> it's like she needed to be reminded that Ryan is not her property. Right, right. Have you guys ever read the book or seen the movie Persuasion from Jane Austen? Yeah. No. There's this character, Anne, okay, and she's a spinster. She's on the shelf. And her sister, she goes to visit her sister, Mary. Mary is married. You know, she's doing very mm -hmm. well for herself. But Mary is miserable because she's no longer the center of attention. She misses the days when she was courting, being courted, being chased, mm -hmm. sent, you know, a young girl in her bloom. And so her sister Anne comes to visit. Everyone's giving Anne attention because they all like Anne. And Mary is just miserable and trying to ruin Anne's fun the whole time because she can't stand the fact that she's no longer the center of attention. <laughs> And that's what Zandra reminds me of, a young woman who she's now she's off the, the bedding shelves. No one's courting her anymore. No one's chasing her for attention. You know, Ryan is no longer trying to win her favor. You know, uh, she's no longer playing any games with Lex. He won. He got her. She's there. And it doesn't she's not special anymore. She got what she wanted, but it's like no one's paying attention to her anymore. You know, and she resents that so much that, yeah, she would ruin a moment where ryan's just trying to cheer up celine because she's just that envious that he's giving someone else attention other than her <laughs> mm -hmm. he's just being a jealous little cow and yeah i i totally agree it's all about the attention she's no longer getting mm -hmm. she sees him giving that attention to celine she sees him helping celine she sees it you know and yeah she's absolutely 100 percent jealous and not because she has any feelings for him she just liked no. the fact that he doted on her. Yeah, exactly. It used to be her who doted. Mm -hmm. Yep. I had this best friend, this guy named DJ when I was a kid, and I was his favorite girl in the world. Like, we weren't going to be a couple or anything. I was just his favorite girl, and I loved having that special position in his life. And it was really hard when we started to get older and we'd date other people, but we'd always make a point of proving to each other that, no, you're more special, you know, you're my bestie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we would do little things to make each other feel special, you know. But eventually we grew out of that. And I remember the first time his girlfriend over me, that was that was hard. Now, granted, I didn't make a big fuss about Alexandra, but I do recall how hard it was. To oh, yeah, I've been through the, similar. The yeah. special girl mm -hmm. in his life. Like, mm -hmm. what? You know, I don't matter anymore. You're not proving that you care about me anymore. Yeah. I wouldn't do it with Zandra dead. She's being a total hoe, but um, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I was like, "You are married." <laughs> I did like the scene between Ryan and Celine before she interrupted it, though. Oh yeah, but that was cute. It was just you know them enjoying themselves, thinking about it. They had the childlike hope Patsy seemed to have, just for a moment. Just letting yourself be optimistic, you know. Yeah. They allowed themselves, you know, to to step out of that that strict box, you know what I mean, and and enjoy what was happening. Yeah, it's like they don't have to believe it, but it's fun mm -hmm. to think, oh, yeah. what if, you know, it just if for no reason to put a smile on each other's face. And I thought that was really sweet. Okay, the paint fight. <laughs> 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 First of 
first of all, like it felt like a very Sasha-like move, but Bray comes up with his plan to help focus the more rats, and he suggests a spot of decorating, which Lex then hijacks. Um, yeah, I, do you think this was a genuine attempt by Bray to unify the whole group, or do you think he had another agenda? He had another agenda. He wanted to show Amber that he could be fun. He could be spontaneous. Maybe lure out of her bedroom and see him the way she thought of Sasha. Mm -hmm. Ah, he was taking notes from Sasha, you think? Mm -hmm. That's the only other agenda I can think that he would have. I'm going to give Bray the benefit of the doubt and say this is actually a moment of personal growth for him. (laughs) Um, Bray, you know, we've talked about that he enjoys being the good guy. And that's important Mm -hmm. to him. But all of a sudden, someone came in and was a better good guy. Okay. And Bray didn't handle that well. He didn't know what to do with that. He didn't enjoy seeing how effective Sasha was at wooing Amber, where Bray was just like, why can't I do that? I don't get it. I don't understand this guy. And then, you know, and he was happy when Sasha left and, you know, Amber was heartbroken. But then he had to live with the reality of her heartbreak. The two weeks that go by of Amber never leaving her room and just no longer mm-hmm. participating and realizing, holy crap, like he meant something to her. Like she really fell in love with him. And that forced some introspection, I think, for Bray to think about who he really is and is he really as great as he likes to imagine he is and how does he affect the people around him? I honestly think he's had an epiphany. Uh, it's no longer fun to see Amber hurt because Sasha's gone. He feels bad about that. He feels somewhat responsible for chasing the guy off, you know. Um, And I do think it was kind of an attempt to be a better version of himself. Like, you know, Sasha did bring a lot of lightness into the mall. He made a lot of people happy. And instead of sitting there pouting, it's like Bray's actually making an attempt to be a better positive role model in the mall. You know, okay, I'm a leader. I shouldn't be sitting around expecting Amber to do this. Why don't I do it? Why don't I be proactive? Why don't I help her, you know, um, in ways that I never did before? So I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, that's good. That that makes me happy. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I love Bray at times. It's just in this, it just seems so much like he's taking a page out of Sasha's book. (laughs) Well, he is, but I don't think it's because of like a selfish motivation or, oh, Amber will like me now. I honestly think it's from a heartfelt place. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, even when he talks, you know, like he he says, she's going through a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, Mm -hmm. I know. He actually, with Sasha not in the mall, now he's removed and Sasha's no longer a threat. He can actually acknowledge the good that Sasha did bring. He may have hated the guy, but nobody else did. Yeah. You know, and I think it just really is reflective having to watch the girl he's in love with in pain and realize, oh, wow, this is not so fun, you know, and um, I I do think he kind of grows up a little bit and he's making an attempt to be better, be more productive because he was really always just doing the the least amount he could get away with. Yeah. And here he is actually making more effort to do more. And I don't think he's trying to take Amber's job or anything like that. And but I think he's actually trying to help, you know, like I, what have I done to ever make her life any easier? Why would she like me? I mean, you have yeah. to sometimes do that. You have to stop and think, why would they choose someone over me? And you get a little self-reflective at that point. You know, and he also probably stopping to think, you know, why did, why would she choose us, the entire tribe? You know, he sees how unhappy she is and, and, and whatnot. So, you know, making her life a little bit easier because she did choose them isn't such a bad thing you know or even just showing gratitude that she she shows them Mm -hmm. you know yeah she did pick us guys why don't we make it worth it (laughs) i mean it's possible i'm giving him more credit than he deserves but that's just the way i i see it especially since his behavior does seem to change going from this point on and how proactive Mm -hmm. bray becomes from this point on yeah um and yeah what did you make of lex hijacking the painting and turning into a fight is anybody surprised that it happened? <laughs> I think it's a very lax move to get the attention of what they're actually up to. Mm-hmm. He knows how to cause a diversion. He does think very quickly on his feet, doesn't he? Very snappy when it comes to quick plans. <laughs> yeah, and he, he saw an opportunity and he took it. It's a shame, though, because it's such a fun moment, but I no know, one yeah. there's a sinister undercurrent. It's like it's a bummer. Because that could have yeah. just been a really cool 
Lex wanting to have fun with his tribe mates, but instead, no, Lex yeah. has got another dark seated plan. There's always, head. you know, always an ulterior motive with Lex. And then he wanted to find no one trusts him. Like, <laughs> <he's> <laughs> not trustworthy. <laughs> Was anyone surprised that Sandra didn't scream her head off for getting her outfit dirty? I, that's the, literally the first thought that went through my head. I'm like, she didn't just freak out about the paint on her outfit. How is she going to get that clean? Mm -hmm. I can forgive that just for the, the sheer joy in her face. She yeah. her <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just uh, such a good moment. I like that. It's very light. It's very fun. Even Tysan was involved, you know? Yeah. Make me makes me feel kind of bad for Patchy that she missed it. Maybe she shouldn't have run off on her own. Yeah, well, <laughs> that is a scene I wish we got to see, like behind the scenes of. Though I really would have loved to have seen that for the paint fight. Mm -hmm. I once found a picture of the kids on set after the paint fight. And yeah, I took a past picture, and they're just all covered in paint and smiling, and it's <laughs> it's very sweet. You know, um, I, I I I lost it years ago, but. I was like, I was. I think it was on the tribe website for a little while. It was so cute, all of them. <laughs> like, just imagining the fun they must have had doing that. Oh movie, yeah, you know, it's so much fun to do. <laughs> I had the chance to do something like that years ago, and yeah, it was great. <laughs> I don't like to get dirty, so I don't think I would enjoy it. I'm like Maggie. I don't like to get dirty. And, uh, and I don't like my kids to get dirty either, right, so I'm like cringing, exactly. cringing. <laughs> but I do like that moment of release when I let myself go and just yeah. like, I'm doing this. Like this one time I was playing, I was playing tag with my, my nephew, you know, and I, I was playing it the way adult does. You know, you're not trying to get sweaty. You're not trying to get dirty. You're not really trying to get into right. it. But then, I don't know, something snapped and I got really competitive with him. And so I started really playing, you know, to the point <laughs> I'm, I'm chasing him. I can't corner worth a damn. I'm falling. I'm in the grass. I'm hiding under cars. Like, I got into the game. It felt so good to just like, yeah. go. <laughs> That moment is just like you break free of your own anxieties and your boundaries and you just go for it. And I could see myself in the paint fight like, no, no. And then it would happen. And then something would just break, and I'd be like, that's it, you know, and I'd, mm -hmm. I'd yes. go into it. Paint yes. would go everywhere. <laughs> and then afterwards, point. you would be angry that you were covered in paint, but hey. Yeah. After I'd be like, oh my gosh, how am I going to get this out of my hair? <laughs> yeah. Hey, and especially in the mall. Without a oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, how did they get the paint off of these clothes? Because they wear them later. <laughs> The, I guess they all jumped in the river somewhere. They were using they were wait they weren't using oil based paint, so they were pretty. It was pretty easy to wash off. They were lucky. Yeah, that's the only like way. Water based clay paint. <laughs> it looked like water paint on uh, Lex's face anyway. So, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it's during the paint fight that Bray tries to get Amber involved, um, and it's during their talk that he apologizes for his behavior towards Sasha. But he stops once again short of confessing his feelings to her saying that he doesn't even want to admit his reasons to himself uh, yeah panel uh yeah, what do you think of that um and do you think that it just makes amber even more confused yeah because i'm confused <laughs> i mean yeah, yeah it, it definitely is confusing you know but i mean would it have been beneficial to her for him to admit it is admit his feelings right then Oh, you know, no, I'm I mean, not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying it's confusing yeah. because even I don't know why when Bray says he doesn't want to admit it to himself, I don't know why. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm not even the person he feels this way about. I'm not Amber, but I'm confused as to mm -hmm. why Bray doesn't even want to admit to himself that he's crazy about Amber. Um, I want to know why, <laughs> what that's about. <laughs> um, so I can imagine if I were Amber, how confusing talking to Bray would be. I'm like, what are you not saying? You're saying a lot of words and you're not saying anything to me. I don't get what this conversation's about. Yeah, that's a very like, specific choice of words. Like, why, would, why doesn't he admit to himself that he likes Amber? That's weird. Yeah. I think that for this moment, though, part of him not wanting to admit it, is also because he realizes he's still heartbroken and this is not the time. Again, though, I don't know what that has to do with him not admitting it to himself. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to, th I, I, you know, he, maybe he doesn't want to think about, like, how he treated Sasha and how he treated Amber. And, you know, like, because of the way that he felt for her. You know, like, if you, lo if you love someone and you have feelings for someone, why would you treat them badly in any aspect? 
I think he doesn't want to admit to himself that he was being a jealous little girl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's but he does admit that to himself. He takes full responsibility for the way he acted, and he knows why. But he doesn't want to admit to himself the reason why. He totally accepts that he was yeah. a jerk and that he was unfair to Sasha. But he doesn't want to accept that the reason he was a jerk was because he's in love with Amber. I don't get that part. Right. Oh, yeah, t- to me, it came across as he just doesn't want to admit to himself that he was that mean to Sasha because of his feelings. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because he's jealous. You know, he then doesn't want to admit that he if can you're not go down Then I just don't get what's going on in Bray's head. Because he's willing to admit he was a jerk to Sasha, but he doesn't want to admit why. I mean, I, not to yeah. Amber. I get him not admitting to Amber. When it's the whole, I don't want to say it to myself. That's yeah, part of the conversation himself. that makes no sense to me. I can understand if Bray just said... I don't want to admit the reason. That would make sense. He doesn't want Amber to know that he was a dick because, oh, because he, was he doesn't want to admit to himself that he was able and capable of going he, that low. That's the thing. Like, he, he admits that part yeah, to himself. He admits to being a jerk, but he doesn't yes, admit to being a he jerk doesn't admit he's jealous. To why? I don't get that. What? Why is that the hard part to admit mm-hmm. to? I don't because Bray is supposed to be this tough, you know, person that doesn't have feelings or whatever. And now, you know, he's letting this girl like tear him down. You know, he's allowing it, you know, because he's not telling her how he feels. He probably is just really being hard on himself right oh, now. I just think it's really w- weird written dialogue because I'm just like, I don't get this. This is a weird way to write it. <laughs> like I can say, you know, as someone like, you know, I've written for Bray for a long time, you know, like I, I, I the way that I would feel is that he wouldn't want to even admit to himself that he is capable of acting that way because of the way that he feels, you know, like... But if you've already admitted that you're capable of acting that way, then why can't you yeah, admit but the he, reason why? That, that's it. That's it. It's the reason why. He doesn't want to admit that, you know, it's because he's jealous of another kid. He's jealous of another of another. But he boy. just literally admitted that he was jealous of him. You know what I mean? So, no, he said he was a jerk. I, I just... Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, guys. It's still. It's all it's, about the wording here. It's clunky dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, weird. it's all about the wording here. <laughs> like, I get what's happening in this scene. I get what Bray's feeling. I just think they did a poor job of writing his dialogue to explain it. And if I was Amber, I'd just be like, then what was the point of you coming in here? <laughs> she should have. You've, so, <laughs> you've, you've said so much and nothing at the same time. I guess, okay, you're sorry you were mean to Sasha. Doesn't matter. He's not here. You're not apologizing to him. You know, I. Why are you even telling me this? If that's what, if I was her, that's how I'd feel. I'd be like, mm. you're coming in here, you're being so earnest. And I don't know why. I don't know why it matters to you now. He's gone. You clearly got what you wanted. And then he stops and he doesn't. And I'd just be like, okay, congrats to you that you're sorry. I don't care. Like, that's how I would feel about that. <laughs> that's the thing. You know, he realizes how very badly, like, she was hurt by the situation and, you know, he feels bad for the way that he acted. I, oh, mean, I know. I'm saying if I was Amber, I would not give a damn. You know, like what he's saying doesn't really, wouldn't matter to me. I just be like, yeah, okay. You know, if you're not going to tell me why you were a jerk to him, then I don't really care about your apology. Is she really that stupid to not know? I mean. If I, if I liked a guy like Bray, okay. And I got those wishy washy signals from him and I was this age and I was as insecure and worried about getting hurt as Amber. Yeah. I wouldn't allow myself. I would totally be like, he doesn't like me. Nothing he does validates him liking me the way he behaves the way he keeps his distance the way he stops himself he doesn't like me i'd be an idiot to think he likes me that's what i'd believe because of the way bray behaves i'd be like yeah and especially since for her way she's viewed it if bray liked a girl he'd go after her he went after celine after all yeah so i'd be like he clearly doesn't like me because he's never made a move that's the thing he hasn't made a move because he more than just likes her so i i don't i don't think amber's stupid for not assuming bray likes her I, stupid was the wrong word it was just the word that came out <laughs> it just yeah i wouldn't think he liked me either and even if i you know there were moments i'd be like they don't mean anything because it's bray you know he, he'll change his tune in an hour so <laughs> i'm not saying that's fair to bray i'm just this is what it must look like from amber's point of view if bray had come came out and said i'm crazy about you if i were amber i would have been shocked i would have been like what <laughs> Since when? Because <laughs> I do think she wanted him to like her, but she's afraid to believe that's possible because of the way he behaves. So she's like, nah, it's not possible. He can't like. Yeah, but he behaves that way because he doesn't want to get close to her because he doesn't want to get hurt. 
again, I'm not saying that what Bray's doing. I know, I know. I'm just Amber's point of view. His behavior is not that of a guy who's into you. Your friends would tell you this guy's not into you. You know what I mean? Yeah, but at 14 years old, boys still picked on us. You know what I mean? To show that they liked us. Like, Maggie, <laughs> Maggie, I am not about bring behavior here. You don't have to keep defending him. <laughs> I'm calling out Amber's logic of not believing I you like know, her. I know, I know. I'm just saying, it's, I'm not saying that I wouldn't think that a guy didn't like me because of the way the Bray's acting at 14 years old is what I'm saying. No, I, I have to say, I think looking at it, that Amber had no reason to assume he really, really liked her. Because, yeah, if he liked another girl, he was very obvious about it. Yeah, but he didn't really, really like Celine. That makes it worse. If he didn't really I like know. her, why I know, her? I know. I mean, I still think he went after Celine because, well, that was an easy way to get rid of Trudy. And she was... Well, easier, less drama, or at least he thought so. <laughs> yeah, he thought so. <laughs> it didn't turn out that way. Whereas Amber sees so much more complex than, well, the average teenage girl in the mall. Even though the others have a lot of baggage, she has this reservation about guys and getting close to people. She's independent. She also has standards, yeah. and she challenges him and pushes him to be better. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. I know I would be scared of that if I was, you know, a boy, like a girl, you know, who are you going to pick? The gazelle that's limping or the one that's racing and has no credit issues? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you're going to pick the easy one. And uh, <laughs> a girl like Amber, that's terrifying that, because you know she doesn't need you and uh, she's fine without you and she's not going to hook up with you because she's scared of being alone or just because you're cute. That's terrifying to address a girl like that. I wonder if he's ever had that before in his life. Well, remember you and I were talking about how uh, we theorized that Bray, being, you know, very beautiful, very charming, very popular, that he likely never had to chase any girls. Yeah. You know, and so he's not any good at it. Girls usually chase him and uh, he just finds himself in relationships. And yet here he is with Amber. He has no idea how to woo her because he probably hasn't had a lot of experience doing it. Well, exactly. After all, he was the captain of the basketball team, you know, the one that gets the cheerleaders. Not at my high school. Our basketball team sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it was our football team. <laughs> You'll never guess what I've found. An elephant. Silly. Look. I wonder how they got there. Either they walked on their little legs or Bray hit them. You mean Bray stole them? Okay, let's, let's move on to the stolen water scandal. So, Casey uses the paint fight as a distraction to plant the stolen water into Bray's room, leaving Lex with an alibi. He then baits neutral Chloe into discovering the water and revealing it to the rest of the tribe. This then enables Lex to initiate his plan and attempt to get Bray kicked out of the mall. Um, yeah, panel, as evil plans go, how would you rate this one? And, yeah, what do you think about the Morats' general reaction to Bray? Strange and evil. I mean, is nobody going to point out that there's no paint on Casey? He didn't join the paint fight. He ran off when in the... He didn't, exactly. Like, he wasn't there. So, yeah, Lex has an alibi. Casey does not. That's what I'm saying. Not a single person is going to recognize that or see it. I don't even know where to begin with mm -hmm. this. <laughs> I, you guys know how much I hate Amber's resurrection story and how much I hate season four. I think I hate these two episodes even more. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this water, oh, this water trial. I, you guys have no idea how much I am restraining myself right now. Just so I can be articulate and not go on a rant. I'm trembling with rage at this. I, there's so many things wrong with this plan, this plot line. I will say to start, I know the point of it. It's a kangaroo court. I get it. I, I know what they're trying to say. There's no, there's very little evidence. You know, we've seen cases like this with somebody who's up there and we're like, it's so obvious they haven't done anything. And yet the jury still thinks it and you're like, how dumb could they be? And mm -hmm. we've seen this kangaroo court. I get it. I just hate everything about this setup. One, okay, just one. Why are Chloe and Casey cleaning Bray's room? 
It's already been established. Yeah. yeah. They don't clean each other's rooms. They yeah. only clean the public spaces, mm-hmm. private spaces. It's your responsibility. So they shouldn't mm-hmm. even be in Braveheart. Mm-hmm. Two, the amount of water Chloe finds should not have even captured her attention. She's literally looking at three liters of water, which is basically three days ration. And that's not enough to... Why would that capture your attention? We already know people save their water for showering and, you know, cleaning their clothes. We also know that anybody can go to the stream and get as much water as they mm-hmm. want. And graze often outside. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just that most people don't want to get water on their own, but they can. Okay. So that's not enough water to justify assuming that he's been hoarding some for himself rather than sharing with the group. It never should have caught Chloe's attention at all. The way she reacts is like, oh my gosh, there's water in here. Like, yeah, it's his rations for frig's sake. Why do you Yeah, care? one of the bottles was missing water too, so. Yeah, you know. Um, and three, I, I don't understand why the group reacts to this water being in Bray's room at all. Like, Chloe comes out and says, I found three bottles of Bra- water in Bray's room. I don't know why anyone would friggin' give a crap about that. Yeah. I, I don't know why that would capture anyone's attention. I don't He wasn't exactly hiding it. It was just sitting behind the it counter. It was just in his room. And yeah. then Bray said, It's not my water. I don't know how this became a big deal. Literally all of their brains had to ooze out of their ears for anything like said to take hold. Mm-hmm. For any of them to feel any sort of doubts about this. None of them look at the, the accuser none of them think gee lex leapt on this he really jumped on this we already know how much he hates Bray. none I, I i don't like this setup i think it's just really poorly done if they wanted me to believe that there was a plausible case against bray one they'd need a lot more water lex mm-hmm. stole a lot of water but it's also just a little too late to bring it back into the story since water is no longer as relevant as it was. Mm-hmm. This is all the water of Lex stole. This is a poor payoff to that storyline, first of all. Um, why not food? Ray is the provisions guy. If you wanted to accuse him of stealing, put a bunch of food in his room. Mm-hmm. That is the one nobody else can get, you know? And I think that they didn't go for food because they've locked that food cupboard. It would be too easy for Lex to get caught taking it out of there. That's true. Yeah, but I mean, you're telling me that Lex has been hoarding water, but he doesn't have a stash of food somewhere. Of course he does, somewhere. It's just, all of this is just dumb. It's too late to bring back the water because you've you've already decided that water isn't as important as it was. It was a big deal when they had a tank, a limited supply mm-hmm. of water. You know, then it would have made sense for Bray to be caught with a little bit more water than anyone's able to hold on to. But it doesn't anymore. It really doesn't. And are you telling me that that's all the water that Lex actually stole were three bottles? What was the whole point of that storyline? If this is the payoff, it's weak. And I hate watching everybody in the story. This, I'm, oh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many people that annoy me in this whole storyline. Ah, there's some elements that I think are interesting, but overall I hate it. I hate everything about it. It's just dumb and really bad writing. And, and why on earth is Celine looking mad at Bray supposedly haven't taken water. Like, why not? If you, if you want to have a good argument about this, why wouldn't you have someone say, well, Bray's stolen from us before? That would be a valid argument mm-hmm. in yeah. this corner. Yep. But nobody says anything that makes sense. Mm. Do you know? Yeah, no, I agree. Mm. Really. It never made sense to me. Mm-hmm. And, and I get why Jack can't be the one to point out this is wrong, because, well, he was on trial for hoarding food before. But yeah, just nobody seems to be willing to give him the benefit of the doubt immediately. Oh, and I love how um, Tai San suddenly has no wise or valid things to say. She's absolutely useless throughout all of this. Mm -hmm. And then she runs to Amber with Trudy saying that we have, we need you, Amber. We could never have this trial without you. And it's like, Tai San, weren't you just the person like an episode ago who told Amber she should go with Sasha because the group doesn't need her? You'll Mm -hmm. be fine. Mm-hmm. And suddenly you can't handle this discussion without Amber being there. Like, frick, why are you so inconsistent? Yeah, but I, I think in this moment she does realize that if they leave this trial up to just Lex, then there's no way Bray isn't going to get kicked out. But I don't understand how the group was convinced to have a trial in the first yeah. place. Remember, this is only Lex who's accusing Bray of stealing. He's the only one making a big deal out of the water, okay? 
Nobody else thinks Bray did it. So why is there even a trial? Why is Lex able to say we're having a trial? And everyone's like, I guess we're having a trial, even though we don't think Bray did this. That doesn't make sense. The only thing I can come up with is because they had one for Jack. But that was different. He was actually caught with a food store. Everyone believed he'd done it. It was right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Nobody believes that Bray's took three bottles of water. They're all saying it doesn't make sense that he would do this. He said it wasn't him. So I don't know how you could get that whole... Wouldn't the majority of the group have to agree that they need to have a trial? It can't just be Lex shouting that we have to have one and Bray needs to get kicked out. Why don't you just have a vote? Lex, if Lex says, I think Bray stole this water, we need to kick him out. You could solve this easily by just having a quick vote of who believes Bray did this. That would have been the fastest way to solve this problem. Yeah. But nobody suggests an obvious answer to this. Like, okay, Lex, you think he stole it. Who thinks Bray stole the water? Who thinks he didn't? Let's vote. If more people think he stole it, let's have a trial or mm -hmm. kick him out. But no, nobody has any brains in this situation. So instead of Lex seeming clever, he, he's just this loud bully and everyone's like cowering and mm -hmm. it makes no sense considering how these people have been set up and... Ah! He's abusing his power of being one of the three leaders. And it makes me hate the Celine situation even more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, like, there wasn't a vote. There wasn't anything. She's been stealing food for so long. And then... <laughs> Braced in three bottles. And you're like, yeah, trial. <laughs> and it's the only thing about this trial that I actually agree with is Bray's reaction to it. Because I would be like, are you freaking kidding me, too? Mm-hmm. Because that's exactly how I'd respond. I'd be so pissed. I would like, I cannot believe you guys want to put me on trial for this. With This is just circumstantial evidence. And it's not even enough to accuse me of this. You really believe I did this? You really need to have a trial? Amber's like, we're going to have a trial so we can get to the bottom of this. It's like, are you freaking serious? <laughs> I think more people might have wanted a trial to make sure they find out who did it. Yeah, maybe. But yes, I just, I hate this so much. It takes an episode that could have been good for me and just ruins it. It tanks it completely. Uh, speaking of ruining things, uh, figuring out that Bray has been framed, Drac tries to persuade Ryan to tell the others about Lex's water stash, while Lex manipulates Sandra into convincing him to stay quiet. I am so mad about it. It, it, it is horrible. Like, just shows, you know, like, she only cares about herself and maybe Lex, you know? Screw Ryan, screw Ryan's feelings, but let me use those feelings to get him to do what I want. It's just, it's awful. I mean, I get that she's terrified of the idea of having to go out there and, you know, maybe end up with the demon dogs. Yeah, but here's the thing, she doesn't have to go with Lex, even though she isn't, she doesn't have to go with him. No. She's choosing to stick beside this, this scum, you know? Yeah, like, but she has this weird idea that they're actually married and it's forever and she has to stay by his side no matter what. At least at this point in time, she does. So I get where she's coming from, but I still don't agree with the way she treats Ryan. She was never Ryan's friend. That's all I can say. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, if anything, it just re it reveals some dark stuff about Zandra, which is sad, mm -hmm. you know, because I still think she's a great character, but uh, this is a very ugly truth about her. She is not above using anybody to her best advantage. It's a sad reveal about yeah. her, because the other times when she played with Ryan, it was you could argue it was innocent. You could make that argument that she wasn't out to hurt him, but um, this is really ugly, yeah. uh, what she's willing to do, um, and that she doesn't think anything of what Lex has done. She doesn't yes. think, Lex, that's terrible. That. You know, yes. she's, she's not in any kind of conflict over it. Like, she's like, well, Ray will get kicked out for something he hasn't done. That's not nice. But she doesn't think for a second, like, Lex, that's messed up. You know what I mean? Like, she has no moral attitude about this. She just doesn't care that he's done this to anybody. And she only cares when she realizes that, Oh, if it doesn't work out for Lex, if he doesn't actually win at this, she's going to be kicked out with him. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it's like, oh my gosh, oh no. And it's an ugly thing to discover about Zandra, you know? But I mean, that's the reality. And I'm glad that again, just like anybody else, we get to see the ugliness of a great character. But it's like, oh, it really tests her likability at this point. Mm -hmm. And Oh, I don't like her. I never have. So it just kind of solidifies it for me. Um, seeing her get angry at Ryan because he doesn't immediately jump on board with covering this up. I thought you cared about me, Ryan. Like he, 
he's she's upset with him but she showed no anger at lex for getting them into the situation in the first place yeah yeah oh that annoys me to know yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow you know and i'm like i'm even slightly annoyed with ryan for allowing himself to once more yes. be manipulated this way again i get it i understand i'm not saying that oh ryan is equally guilty in any way just no. it does bother me that ryan allows himself to be so easily manipulated into the situation once again um mm -hmm. like, or he oh, feels like God, yeah I he has to protect her i can't let her get kicked out again mm -hmm. i can't let her get kicked out because of lex you know um, and he even says, they wouldn't kick you out. You didn't do it. And she yep. straight up says, he's my husband. If he goes, I go. And Ryan literally cannot see the difference between Zondra being kicked out against her will and Zondra choosing to leave her scheming, cheating, horrible husband. Yep. You know, I, mm -hmm. I'm like, Ryan, honey, you know, but I get it. Baby steps for him. But, you know, Zondra got the attention from him. She wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she did. Uh, <laughs> just you know it's, it, it even shows you more how very little the lex ever really cared for Ryan. yeah mm. strangely enough i'm not the one person i'm not really angry at is casey even though he's the one who did it because again i understand what fueled casey's actions bray has been nothing but mean to him mm -hmm. from the moment he came to the mall and to the point where casey was believing he was going to be kicked out mm -hmm. of the mall you know Bray's been antagonistic to him, so why wouldn't he want Bray gone? Why wouldn't he side with Lex, who protects him? Yeah. You know, because he wants to make his mental proud. Yeah, that too. Like he looks so up to Lex so much. You know, I'm not saying that he's some innocent who should know right from right. wrong. Clearly, Casey doesn't seem to know right from wrong. Yeah, but he, at the end of the day, he is still a kid. But I get why he, how easily he was. Yeah, he did what he was told. Yeah. He's like, yeah, let's get rid of that guy. He's such a jerk to me. And Lex has been great to me. Yes, he, <laughs> sir, he doesn't think about the long term. You know, he thinks about the, this is what has happened to me. You know, like, yeah, yeah. He's a kid. It's a, it's logical. But freaking Chloe. <gasps> Water. Why is this here? Yeah. The way she was Chloe, where did your brains just go? Yeah. Yeah. And how did she get from the paint from the paint fight to cleaning Bray's room? I, I still was when as soon as they started, I'm like, why are they in there? Yeah. Yeah, and I already covered like they shouldn't even yeah. be in his No. Room. That's weird. But this is see, this is one of those plots that does not feel organic to me, where it's not it doesn't feel like it's being driven by the characters' natural actions. It feels like the characters are being moved by a plot they wanted to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, they wanted this trial to happen. And so a bunch of characters have to act strange and kind of dumb for it to happen. And I don't like it at all. They needed a better setup for any of this to make sense to me. Like all the motivations make sense. Like why Lex would do this, why Casey would do this, the bad blood between these people. All of that makes sense. But the logistics, <laughs> facts, everything laid out like, no, none of this makes sense. <laughs> I get why they made, why KC had Chloe find it though. Oh yeah. Because that's the first person who will go out and say, just say out loud what's wrong, you know? Well, actually she wasn't going to. Yeah, but. Her instinct was like, these are, well, whatever they are, there's probably a reasonable reason for them to be yeah. here. Yeah, but I mean. So I'm just going to put them back. Someone like Celine would have never spoken up because of what she's done. Ryan would have known. So yeah, that basically left Chloe or Dal. I mean, the only reason Chloe speaks up is because KC goes into so bleeding. Too. Yeah, yeah, like, this is bad, Chloe. Why yeah. do you think this water is here, Chloe? And she starts to doubt herself. Mm -hmm. and yep, that's, that's the only reason. Because, yeah, she immediately was go going to put them back, you know, and it's Bray. He wouldn't do something like that. Not to mention, it's only three bottles of water. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the amount of water he's being Two and three fourths, sorry. Jeez. Come on, you guys. Doesn't Lex have a lot full of water? Put some effort into this this trot this plan you have. Come on. You guys like that Jack went straight to Ryan and is like Lex can't get away with this? I mean, I'm glad that he did. And in his case he did it, but he knows that Bray didn't do this. Right. I don't know why he goes to Okay. I it's in okay, okay, I don't want to say this. It is definitely in character for Jack to not speak up himself mm -hmm. because he's scared of Lex and to see, get Ryan to do it. Like, you're his best friend. You wouldn't lie about it. But it's mostly because he's afraid of Lex. Mm -hmm. He's afraid of Lex, but also because of what happened with his trial, he's indebted to Lex. 
for still being there. I'm surprised. Why doesn't Jack go to Bray? Like, just go to the source and be like, look, I, you should know this. I know that blah, 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 he was doing I this. I think he was afraid to get in trouble for knowing that Lex had this water. Guilty by association Jeez. and all that stupid I mean, Jack, you know how to bury yourself in a hole. Yeah. And I mean, you know, he has seen how Ryan and Lex have kind of fallen out. Uh, him going to Ryan isn't completely surprising, you know. Uh, if this, if the writer's goal was to make us dislike a lot of characters and to feel the same frustration as Bray, I'll say they did a good job at that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> all of this stuff pisses me off, puts me in a bad mood. No, I no the the Jack part of it doesn't really piss me off. It makes sense to me. No, what pisses me off is that Jack has been sitting on this all this time. Like that Bray is getting this wall of crap on him from all this douchey stuff other characters started doing from the very beginning and it just annoys me and I, maybe that's the point we're supposed to get annoyed at it well done <laughs> <laughs> i'm actually just not impressed with this plan i've seen lex be a little more clever than this before and i don't think this is that well thought out it, 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 this plan should have fallen apart immediately but everyone had to be stupid so that his plan would work so it's not like, for example, when he wins uh, his first election or when he wins Jack's trial. He was being very clever, and I gave him props for those. But this one just doesn't... Nah, he's not being clever. He just lucks out that everyone's brains oozed out of their ears. I think he banked on Amber being out of it and yeah. saw that as his best oppor opportunity to try this. I even understand the fact that the whole part of this is to get Amber back into her, the groove of showing how necessary she is to the group and blah, blah, blah. But in order to make Amber necessary to the group, they had to make the rest of the group completely incompetent. And it just felt, it's just a lazy setup, all of it, to make this happen. And I'll never get over how dumb everyone has to become so this can work, so this plot can happen. I mean, what does it say when Trudy is literally the only person in the group making a fair argument? Come on, where's, where's everybody else? She's literally the only one who's making any sense and standing up to lax okay uh, and, and just to finish off the episode um we close off by seeing patsy come face to face um with the adult um yeah what do you think about that final cliffhanger way to go <laughs> she, that was quite a cliffhanger <laughs> she did it she found him yes who would have guessed well she had bob with her you know that helped yeah bob's a tracker don't don't, <laughs> don't worry about bob <laughs> Seriously, what's Bob supposed to be tracking? What do old people <laughs> smell like? <laughs> She's like, Bob, search for hard candy. <laughs> I I don't I still don't think I I'm trying to remember my first impressions of this episode and this cliffhanger. I still don't think I was convinced that she'd found an ad an adult. Oh no. I still I, don't. Yeah. It's like this. There's a misunderstanding. There's a mistake. There's just no way the grown ups are still alive. Any of them. I'm like, she didn't find a grown up. I, Nah, I don't think I'm like, so. is everybody failing to remember what the virus did to people? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's my thing. Like, how long ago was it? And then today, I didn't even pay attention because I was still fuming. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, well, yeah, like, I, the episode was suddenly over, and I'm like, oh, crap, that's what it, that's how it ended. That's right. <laughs> I just can't wait to go to the next episode. They didn't show Glenn's face, right? No. It was obscure. Yeah, okay, so. I, that was another clue. They just showed Patsy seeing someone, but you can't really tell who they are. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is not a grown up. They would just show us it's a grown up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like they're hiding the identity of this person for a reason because it's a mistaken identity, you know? Because I mean, the minute in the next episode, you're going to recognize his face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <No. laughs> it's a nice cliffhanger. I'll give him that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. It's just. I don't know if it's be I again this last third of the season just becomes very bogged down with a lot of story when we just had nothing going on for ages and mm -hmm. some of it comes a little too hard and fast and I feel like this episode is maybe a little too much going on so it's a little hard to absorb any of it and I'm completely distracted by the the whole water theft to give a crap about Jack and Patsy's obsession mm -hmm. with grown-ups being alive you yeah, know basically but yeah good cliffhanger for the episode mm -hmm. can't wait to get to the next one i apologize if i came across as combative again <laughs> these two episodes upset me very very much <laughs> but i was trying very hard even when I was, before i had to watch it i was like oh no oh no i know it's coming 
and the whole time I was watching it, I was like, how am I going to talk about this without setting something on fire? <laughs> so that brings episode 38 to a close. Um, thank you very much to the panel. And we'll see you next time for episode 39. So until then, bye. 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 Bye.